All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Ad Tactics training. This one is going to be a pretty quick overview of specifically the Ad Tactics dashboard. And we're just gonna be kind of scrolling from left to right and I'll be just talking about the different columns and how they can be used, um, as well as some of the stuff here above the fold on some of the auditing. And we've kind of touched briefly on some of this stuff so far, but just get a little more detail and explanation behind it. So first off, let's discuss the uh, let's go keyword dominator stuff because that's kind of further to the left. This customized view area here, you can actually check whichever sections you want to display or not display and click this little blue icon here. And then it's going to hide the ones that you don't want to uh, or that you don't care to see. So uh, know that that's there. The uh, little readouts here you see is going to be always for the active range. So if I, you just apply filter like I just did, you can see it kind of changed all of the, the relevant keyword metrics. And these are uh, rank range thresholds that you can actually set here on the settings tab. So if I go back here and then scroll um, actually right there, that's where you, right here is where you specify those. So if you want to change the ranges, you can specify that there. And then anything you're tracking will be, uh, will be kind of totaled based on those ranges. Um, and then comparatively, there's the keyword dominator data as it gets imported. You've got the static metrics here. So you've got the search volume metrics and the organic rank metrics. Um, so that data here gets kind of stored and accumulated over time. The keyword dominator data though, you can see you've got, uh, essentially it's all static data that gets imported. We showed that in the previous video. You've got your, your title density and then all these other Cerebro related metrics the one thing i wanted to show here is there is a section that can slide out if you hit this little plus button and it's got your SKU. it's also got a nickname field here if you'd rather view your products by nickname so to set the nickname you actually got to go back to the settings tab and you can see this yellow section that says customize product list what you would want to do is you can put you don't have to put all of them on here if you don't want um, you can just go like that and and just make sure you've got the ones on here that you want to assign a nickname and then you can just call this product whatever. You can just call it whatever you want. So if you've got a special name you refer to it by and then the next time you sync it with the button right here, um, it's going to actually populate that nickname for you. But I tend to not use it. The other thing there is the tag and the notes. So... Um, you can put inline notes in the cells. You can tag this depending on, you know, whatever type of, of keyword it is. If it's a misspelling or whatever, you can call it whatever you want. You can also right click on these cells. You can insert notes this way. So a lot of different options. The hover link here takes you to the Amazon search result page for whatever that keyword is. Priority, this is a column you can actually just come up with a numerical, you know, scale or uh, it comes in from your Keyword Dominator file if you have that in Keyword Dominator. If not, it'll be blank. Uh, but you can assign that or override it here in the Tactics dashboard. And uh, the main use for the notes field and priority for, for me is I will prioritize all my keywords based on relevancy. And then the notes is where I'll put in a date based on when I want to launch them. Um, and then I can really easily use this Tactics dashboard to launch new, uh, new campaigns that I've really thought through. The red columns here will come in from your Helium 10 rank tracking files. So I've probably got some that are populating from some of these other keywords. So you just know, need to know you have to organize those and add them to your Helium 10 rank tracker if you want to track them in um, ad tactics. Otherwise, you won't have the data in the back end to support that. Uh, but you can see some of these, the data is populated. You got your search volume your organic and sponsored rank. Now keep in mind, you can only do up to 10,000 rows worth of that data. So that's why when you download your rank tracking files, I recommend only the past like three to five days worth. Um, and then that trend will show up here uh, as well as the most recent search volume, organic or sponsored rank. All right, and then moving over from the left to right, you've got your brand analytics. You've got the brand analytics uh, <clears throat> conversion share, your brand analytics click share search term impression share rank and search term impression share and that's for sponsored products file um, you've got a few trends up here coming off your search query report you've got all of your search query performance report uh, percentage share metrics here 
You've also got some of the values in the back end, and that's we've got some areas here designated that are blank. You can see that's hidden up here that we'll probably add those in the future, uh, especially if you want to do some like custom calculations and things like that. It's nice because this information from the search query ASIN reports are directly from Amazon, so it's literally telling you per keyword. Uh, you know how many orders and stuff like that you're getting you know this area up here it's useful you can click on any of these any of these rows and then you come up here and click on search query uh, history and it's just going to take that row that keyword and the asin populate it here and then if you've got any data in your search query performance history back end it's going to populate it there so you can see i've only got a couple weeks worth but if you had multiple weeks worth it'll show you kind of the the history of that so that's the intent there uh, we went over the search term report keyword section in a previous video but it's essentially if you use this feature to harvest new keywords and bring them into the tool it's going to it's going to dub it as uh, st as far as the list type and it's also going to capture your uh, instantaneous kind of metrics there based on whatever search term report you had and that's just there for reference if you want to sort it and say you had one that was just doing really well and you wanted to go back in the future and, and see what that was you'd have that data there if you don't intend to use this feature you can always hide it again just by deselecting this and just clicking this here to hide that kind of pain and from here on it's mostly ad related information so for here the first section in green you see your sponsored products totals and this is all of your metrics coming directly from your sponsor product campaigns tab uh, in blue here we've split out the single keyword exact metrics and that's just because that strategy uh, is very very powerful so we wanted to be able to monitor that uh, separate from everything else you can see the active check uh, pane here this is a very important section because it tells you what you're currently targeting active enabled in your sponsor products campaigns in all the match types so you can use this to filter really quickly and just know what you're not targeting in versus uh, if a number other than one shows up that means you've got a duplication now there is uh, some filters that we already talked about that can help you kind of pause those so the next time you refresh this it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be duplicated, and that's in the stoop checker here, but just know that that's there. The campaign creator, uh, this save this for another video that actually shows you how to, um, in bulk, use this Ad Tactics dashboard to create inline bulk campaigns. And then we're moving into sponsored brands. You can see here, if I scroll down, there may be some that have sponsored brand information. There's one there. Um, so it's basically just saying, you know, this keyword is currently active if we scroll over it's got the active checker there uh, one time in an exact one time in a phrase one time in a broad so it's pretty self-explanatory we're still working on integrating the inline campaign builder for the brands and display but that'll be coming down the pike very soon you can see there's uh, the video information similarly you got the campaign builder all right, and then very similarly with the sponsored display, if I had any ASINs that I was tracking, they would be showing up there. And then you've got all your combined totals for all your ad types. So this is just a way you can kind of sort and filter by those metrics as well. All right, guys, so hopefully that makes some sense. Just to kind of resummarize, the main focus of the Ad Tactics dashboard is to get all your keywords in one place, to have it really organized per ASIN, allow you to kind of sort and filter the auditing tool up here, which again, it's this button here. I went over that in the previous video. And that's gonna give you a really accurate breakdown from a bunch of different slices of your sponsored products, brands, and display sheets so you can see what's working well. And the whole intent there of having it above the fold is so you can use it to plan out what your next kind of round of keywords that you're gonna launch in your campaigns. And once you've kind of used these columns over here to specify what those are gonna be and plan them out, then you have a really efficient way to build out the campaigns in bulk. All right guys, so that's gonna about do it for the Ad Tactics overview video. I will see you guys on the next one where we're gonna be going over the bulk campaigns. See ya.